we always talk about how in these 100 mile races you live like multiple lifetimes and when you try to retrace everything that happened in a 100 mile race, that's how it feels. I just think in general, whether it's your career or life, whether you have smooth sailing for a while, it seems like no matter what, something like hits you and, and I think you just decide in a moment like that, I'm not gonna let all that work I put in get wasted in this moment. Yeah, I guess we'll see. What you made of. Yeah, I guess we'll see. course is really a true kind of mountain race that um, you know there's not too many in the US that could really consider themselves a mountain race this one has really everything ruggedness remoteness um, high altitude uh, vistas um, the kind of difficulty that you would expect from a mountain race so really it has um, everything that I'm looking for in a great race. The course is kind of logical, goes over some really beautiful passes, um, through some amazing terrain. Um, so yeah, it was really kind of um, one of my favorite races that I've done so far. Sawatch Mountains are these super rugged strain of mountains. It starts with this climb up almost Mount Ontario, which is a 14,000 foot peak. Um, just that alone, I think, is breathtaking, but the rest of the course just gets better. I like really steep stuff, so kind of up and straight down, and there's a ton of that. And then later on, you go through St. Elmo, which is this old ghost town. Um, it's just spectacular. Whatever we need. You got trash? Get rid of. Yep. Got trash. Oh, 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 oh,
just to top this one off with water. Okay. Do you have any broth? You do have broth. Do you have a cup? Uh, yes, I do. We can reach it. Got it. How are you feeling? Uh, no trash. No trash. No trash. Sorry, this is water or tea? Yeah, let's go water with it. Water. Yeah. Water. Grab a seat. Yeah, grab a seat. How are you feeling? I'm down right now. Down right now. Okay. Just let me make sure everything's good. Mentally, when you prepare, you just need to be ready to deal with whatever comes your way and push through and just never stop. From the morning when you start and you go out, um, it's really just step by step and dealing with your body in that moment and making sure that you get to the next aid station and then dealing with your body in that moment and just continuing on and just knowing that you'll never give up, you'll never quit, and that if you keep moving eventually, you're going to cross the finish line. Um, it's just a matter of how soon uh, or how long it'll take you. There's just nothing like it and you know passion is kind of a cliche word but I just feel so much passion for it and it brings me joy. The entire time you're experiencing step by step all the different views and the terrain and the ups and downs and it just becomes part of you. Even now I can think back to the view that I had at the top of a climb when the sun was setting and I can still see it, I can still feel it, and um, it just becomes part of you. And so I don't know why anyone wouldn't want to experience that. Um, it's just, it's just joy. Every time we get out there, I feel a little piece of that joy and um, just keep coming back for more. So, I love it. When day turns into night, it's a whole different ball game, and you really are just in survival mode, and you're just trying to get to the next aid station, and it's it's a time warp, but like it's it's weird. Time will go very very slow in the moment, but then as a whole, it's it's weird because you'll be 
thinking about that next aid station and it seems like it's taking forever, but yet you're looking at your watch and time is just flying by. You literally run for a full day. So you see the sun come up, you see the sun come down, you might see the sun come up again. And um, I think all of that really is pretty surreal for the mind to take in all at once. And especially when a chorus is as well done as High Lonesome is where there's just so much beauty all along the course. Um, and I really mean that, it's just spectacular. You, you really feel like you have different experiences entirely along the course. And I think when a course is really well laid out, this one, you have different experiences completely all along the course. There we go! What's up? Three six, have a good one. Do you have a pacer? Yes. All right, wonderful. One of the things with running um, longer races and especially a hundred mile distance is that um, you know, if you compare it to something like a road marathon, which I've run uh, many of those, is that um, a road marathon, everything has to go perfectly. And you really you don't have the luxury of, of a mistake or uh, you know, something going wrong in the race. Whereas in a hundred mile race, the, you know, what really defines success on that is, is when the kind of failures come, when the difficult times come, how you, react to those you know how you kind of manage your way through those difficult times because as many of them as you do it always surprises you with how difficult they are and how how those lows can just be the um, lower than you remember from the last race so every time you run one of these it kind of surprises you and we kind of like to laugh and joke about kind of the misery and the suffering but <laughs> you kind of look at it with this kind of gloss almost sometimes that kind of misery and you kind of joke about it um, you know in training and stuff and things but when you actually get there in the midst of the moment it's really quite challenging to kind of keep the motivation and the willpower to kind of move through those dark times um, and with experience comes that kind of knowledge that at some point it will pass and you know you might be really miserable and it might be at mile 10 it might be at mile 50 it might be at mile 90 but usually it will pass and there'll be a better period and you know, you kind of will very quickly forget about those dark times. When you're coming out of the Raspberry Gulch aid station, which is six miles to go, so you're just thinking, just get to the finish line, just keep moving. Um, there's one kind of big climb coming up and over this uh, ridge, and then you're down onto the road. And so you're just really, you're thinking about the finish line, but you also can't get too excited yet because you still it could still take quite a while to go six miles at the end when you're shuffling. I did the, I did the shuffle.
when you actually cross that line, you have all those positive thoughts, all those good things that are going through your head, and then you're also just really proud of what you just accomplished. Um, and they actually got to the finish line. It's quite a powerful feeling and um, every hundred mile that you run you kind of, um, I think that's why you go back to it, you kind of really kind of looking for that kind of satisfaction that's hard to get in a, a lot of kind of racing and just life in general. Across the finish line, um, there's no feeling like it. It's just such a sense of accomplishment and just joy and all sorts of emotions. And it's just, you can't beat it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing quite like finishing a 100 miler. <laughs>